Steve Young will always be known as one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. His success has been measured by the many records he set throughout his career, his MVP awards, his Super Bowl trophy, and Hall of Fame induction. But what many people don't know is that Steve Young attributes much of his success to the man who really taught him to be great, to never give up, to work hard with absolute determination. And that man, he'll tell you, is his father, Grit. My dad, he always said, whatever game, whatever sport you want to play, you go play it, but you can't quit. He was the tough guy. Well, there's no question that he expected certain things. Was it something that you were afraid of? No. But did you respect it? Yeah, because he lived it. You could see that he lived it. And then when he asked you to do it, it was that much more meaningful. Steve and my husband, Grit, are so much alike with their determination and their integrity and their uh, purpose in life. When it comes down to that determination and that grit, you know, that you, it, it's the same. I would look uh, sometimes when Steve was absolutely determined and I would see that bit of the helmet that you could see the eyes and I thought, is grit out there or is that really Steve? It's amazing that, that from a child somebody saw that in my dad and called him grit because it just it really fits him. He's, he's all about hard work and, and being tough and you know not whining. Obviously early on he must have had some tough guy uh, characteristics because <laughs> that's the only way you get a nickname like, like grit. I've always loved that nickname. I always wish that was my nickname, you know? I could have been something with that nickname. My proper name is LeGrand, and that's a very difficult name for most people to deal with. And uh, so kids were going to call me something besides that. Grit grew up in the post-war 1950s in Provo, Utah, where he learned to work hard to help support his family during difficult times. If I got anything at all, if I wanted a new mitt or something, I had to earn it. I had to go out and get, so I learned to work pretty early in my life. And high school came, and that's when uh, I really took an interest in sports. And ended up lettering in four different sports and wanted to go on. And uh, so I walked on at uh, BYU as a freshman, and I worked as hard as I could and, uh, and made the team. I had the record for the most yards running in the uh, in the season that was something like 500 yards and Steve looked at me and says pops we did that in a game I mean look what he did he led the whack and total yardage with 480 yards in the season I mean I, I it's pretty remarkable you know we did that in a quarter grit was determined to teach his kids the importance of work to achieve anything worthwhile in life my goal with them was to uh, teach them discipline, you know, teach them to, to do things hard, like I learned it the hard way. I mean, you have to learn those things. Those things don't just happen. And uh, I knew that because I had to learn it that way. It was always important to me to, to try to teach them to, to do things that are hard and finish it. And I think we all got that sense of work. That if you really wanted to get something done, if you really want, to, if you really want something, it's going to be some work. And don't be afraid of that. Go get it done. Looking back growing up, I always knew that my dad cared about me. He, I knew that he, was, that he uh, uh, cared about what I was doing and, and that what I did was very, very important. I think it was more than anything just kind of being with us. He was always willing to be out there and uh, with us, actively doing things with us, uh, playing ball with us. And wanting them to be as good of athletes as they could be, we always went out and threw a ball or did something together, so I was with him a lot and tried to be with him, and that, that's the way you show love, in my opinion. Grit knew that difficult times would lie ahead for his kids, so he taught them to fight through adversity, no matter how hard the battle may be. I think I look back on, uh, especially Little League Baseball, particularly, I, got, I remember when 13 years old, I was in an unfortunate situation where I, I didn't get a hit the whole year and it just got more and more embarrassing through the summer. I remember game after game, just, I couldn't get a hit, I couldn't get a hit. But my dad, you know, he said, look, if you want to 
if you want to fix it, let's, you know, we got to work at it. But I remember it being kind of really cold and miserable and rainy and sleet and snow and he'd be pitching the ball and I'd be hitting him and I got better and it never happened like that again. You know, in fact, that, people always ask me some of the tough experiences in my sporting career. That was one of them and, you know, through that year he, he got me over it. But it wasn't like uh, technical. He wasn't like, you need to hold your bat, you need to watch your, you know, it was more, look, we're just going to, it was more repetition, we're just going to work at this and we're going to get better at it. And, uh, and I just sensed that for me, if I didn't quit and I played hard and behaved in, you know, in an honorable way, that it was all going to be fine. Coming up, the amazing story of Steve Young's football career and how his father, Grit, helped mold Steve into greatness. As a young kid, I had trouble leaving the house. Grit and I had no idea that there was such a thing as separation anxiety when Steve was growing up. We wished that we had. The hard work and discipline that Grit had taught his kids paid off as each excelled in sports. Steve lettered in three sports and was an all-state football player and an all-star basketball and baseball player, even throwing a no-hitter as a pitcher. And it was amazing to me every time they made the next level, you know, when Steve was recruited out of high school, it was unbelievable. To have uh, some of these major universities in the East recruit him was like North Carolina and Boston College, and it was just incredible that they would be coming around knocking on my door. Steve decided to go to Brigham Young University where his dad played and where there was a now famous photo of Grit Young hanging on the wall in the team room. That picture was old school to me. I grew up with that picture kind of on the mantle. It was one of the pictures that they had was his you know, BYU picture. It looks like he's charging the, the camera. Steve had dreamed of playing quarterback at BYU after watching many of the great All-Americans breaking record after record with an exciting new style of passing offense. You know, and then now here I am at BYU playing quarterback after Gifford Nielsen and Virgil Carter and Mark Wilson and Jim McMahon and now I'm on stage. Steve would soon face one of the greatest challenges and pivotal moments of his life as he battled homesickness and severe separation anxiety. I was a young kid, I had trouble leaving the house and they call that separation anxiety. BYU football was the most anxiety ridden, brutal time because I was young, I hadn't done this very much. Scoville was the quarterback coach, didn't even know who this kid was. So he didn't have any spot for Steve, and there were seven other quarterbacks at that time. I'm gonna say that story, and I've heard it a thousand times. It was true. I saw it on this chart. I was eighth string. Steve got no chance at all to do anything, and uh, he was on the Hamburger Squad, which was the team that ran the plays for the opposing team. And, they called a hamburger because they just got beat to shreds. Man, I want to go home. <laughs> I cannot tell you my freshman year, first semester, that, that fall, that fall camp, I did not unpack my bags until I went home for Christmas. I went to school my whole first semester with my bags packed, just in case. <laughs> I was homesick and I remember calling him and just saying, coaches don't know my name. I'm just a big tackling dummy for the defense. No, I mean, it's just, that's horrible. This is just not what I expected, and this is not what we talked about, and, you know, this is not anything that I think is going to be a positive. Um, you know, I think we should just, you know, just forget it. Just, you know, I think I'd like to come home. And he called up, he says, uh, this is not going good for me. He says, I want to quit and come home. And, you know, I thought to myself, I don't want this kid to, to learn how to quit. I mean, that's the worst thing in the world. I, and I, you know, determined to teach my kids how to not quit and, and see through the hard time. And he was classic. He said, look, um, you know, you know that uh, you can quit. And that's up to you. That's your decision now that you're 18. But you can't come home because I'm not going to live with a quitter. And you know that. You know that since I was a, you were a kid, you're not, you're not coming back here. Thanks to the influence of his father, Steve decided to stick with it, stay at BYU, and go to work. 
He started to learn how to become a throwing quarterback as he moved up the list of backups to the legendary Jim McMahon. It was at BYU that he really learned how to pass and, uh, and do it well. I had just been watching Jim McMahon all fall and, and I saw how he threw the football. Jim was very technically, very sound. I finally learned how to throw it you know, out of my hand. I just watched Jim and I, and I had this new thing that happened. I'd learned to throw the football. And the funny thing is, is once I learned, I could throw it anywhere. And so I had this thing that I had, had discovered. And I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't put the ball down. Everywhere I went, I was throwing the football because it was like, because you always wanted to play quarterback. You wanted to be able to throw the ball where you want. And I couldn't do it very well. And all of a sudden, I could do it really well. Early in Steve's sophomore year at the University of Colorado, Jim McMahon was injured and taken out of the game. Now, I was at that Colorado game. That was very memorable to me to see him come in and, and in the first play out of the second half, McMahon gets knocked down and out. He's out of the game, and here comes my son. You know. Steve surprised everyone with his golden arm, and he could run like no quarterback had ever run before. He would replace Jim McMahon, and by his senior year, he broke many NCAA records. He was consensus All-American and placed second in the Heisman Trophy voting. He received the Davy O'Brien Award as the nation's most outstanding quarterback. He would be the number one draft pick in professional football. It was amazing to me what he did in college. I couldn't believe it. It was just mind-boggling. Coming up, Steve's remarkable journey to the NFL, where he would have to prove his grit all over again. But it would be much, much bigger than anything he could have ever imagined as a young boy who loved being home. You know, what ended up happening over the next few years is obviously a crazy story. Steve was at the 1980 Miracle Bowl when Jim McMahon threw that Hail Mary pass to Clay Brown to win the game. Going for the end zone, receivers are there, defenders are there. and had been the starting quarterback in 1982 when BYU played Ohio State and suffered a humiliating loss to the Buckeyes. So to cap off his amazing senior year at BYU, Steve was absolutely determined to finish strong and to win the Holiday Bowl in 1983. We can't go 0-2 in Holiday Bowls. This is a disaster. After rallying his team from behind in a great game against Missouri, his BYU career all came down to the last play of his college career. I think he pitched it to the, to the running back going to the right, and then he drifted to the left, and it was an organized play, and, and then the running back stopped, and then threw the pass, Steve going out to the left. I just remember Steve dancing around, and that wasn't like him. I'd always taught him, you score a touchdown, drop the football, and go back to the bench, you know? This, Celebrating nonsense is nonsense. That, I mean, that's the way I grew up. <laughs> you know, whenever you ask me, what does Steve do when he's just completely lost his mind in glee? That's what I do. When he became a consensus All-American, I mean, I was in disbelief. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I that that never entered my mind. I remember telling myself, "Do not go pro because you cannot keep this up. You can't go through this. It's too hard." Following some very discouraging years with the LA Express and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Steve was traded to the San Francisco 49ers, where he would be the backup to one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Joe Montana. I'd already been apprenticed in this whole idea of replacing a legend with Jim McMahon in college. So I'd already kind of done that. So then I, when it was Joe Montana, I kind of sensed myself, okay, this is bigger. My feeling for Joe is I'm in awe of Joe Montana. I was like, no one can do that. No human being can do what I saw him do. If he got to play at all, it was just a mop up, hand the ball off, you know, and he, he was pretty discouraged. He'd come back and he'd go home alone. He didn't, I didn't, I mean, he was really discouraged. Yeah, I talked to him a lot about it, and, you know, and I said, well, Steve, you've learned how to do things hard. Stick with it, just keep your chin up. You'll get your breaks. I really was missing out on an, an incredible opportunity. I was making something miserable and difficult that was one of the most pure, wonderful opportunities that someone could ever have. Learn from Joe Montana. 
prepare to play for the San Francisco 49ers in the glory years. Go out there and find out how good you are. That's the challenge. It's freeing. Suddenly, I could follow Joe Montana. Young, in trouble, he's going to be sacked, no, gets away, he runs, gets away again, goes to the 40, Young is in trouble, and he got away somehow, gets away again, to the 35, cuts back at the 30, Young might score, to the 20, the 50, the 10, he dies, touchdown. The reason why I was a good runner was because no one was around. You know, people would expect you out of bounds, I'd cut back, because you could. I think more than anything, it was just, I need to get this ball across the line, and <laughs> I'm, I can't go out of bounds. I gotta figure out a way to do it. But I really did not look for trouble. Well, I remember that time my helmet came off. I remember thinking to myself just real quickly, well, I can't fall down. That'd be weird. You never think about what you're gonna do in that situation, so I just started doing what I normally do, you know? Steve Young became the MVP of the league and set many NFL records. But there was still one goal that would be the sweetest of all, that he had not helped his team achieve a Super Bowl victory. I'd already missed two opportunities for Super Bowls. I've watched two with Joe Montana. Missed two by losing championship games to the Cowboys. But in the 1994 season, Steve and the 49ers had their chance. They were on their way to Super Bowl 29. You know, history's gonna be made one way or another. It was intense nervousness because I thought, oh my gosh, he's come all this way. This, I mean, this is, He's waited so long to replace Joe and to be successful, and the whole thing came down to this game. I think he threw a touchdown to Jerry Rice very early in that game. It was a perfect throw, and they scored, and I, I started to feel a little bit relieved, but it, he ended up throwing six touchdowns, <laughs> and I, did, I didn't get over my nervousness until it was all over. I truly, I remember thinking in the third quarter, I said, I think we're going to, I think we got a shot at putting us away. We did, I ran off the field, uh, they took me out of the game, and I thought, I mean, it kind of all flooded in. You know, it's like you, you set out to do something, put the flag on Everest, and then you do it, and there's a moment where you take a picture, and it's really amazing. Coming up, the greatest joy of all, coming back home. He always impressed me as being a kid that just was determined to succeed. He's just never been a quitter. He's always been a kid that worked hard in, in school. And he was afraid to fail. And I think that drove him. He wanted to do the best he could, and uh, he was able to do it. It was amazing. I watched him become more and more famous. Was this boy going to go beyond us. Um, are we going to lose him in ways? But that wasn't what happened. It seemed like the higher he went, the more he needed us to stabilize him. I think of this young boy who was so homesick. If he hadn't stayed at BYU, he wouldn't have caught that in the Holiday Bowl. If he hadn't kept with it in the NFL, he never would have met Roger Staubach. If he hadn't have kept going to find that wife, he wouldn't have had the family. And so I think, you know, it takes grit and determination. When Steve Young was inducted into the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, he asked his father, Grit, to give his introductory speech. He spoke of my Hall of Fame induction, and it's like, you can talk about all these incredible things that happened, but people say, oh, that's what I need to do for my son so he can be in the Hall of Fame. No, that's what you can do for your son to go find out who he can be. How good can he get at something, whatever it is. The legacy of this father on his family can be summarized in one word. I think you watch your dad and then you end up picking that stuff up. So when you talk about grit, that's grit. Go out. Don't be afraid. Move forward. Take challenges. Fail. Get back up and go. I think integrity is a great word to describe my dad. 
um, because he's very honest uh, in all that he did. There's a relentlessness to it. There's a, there's a stick to it and a resolve. He has this gruff exterior, but if you ever talk to him and sit down, and he's very sensitive and, and, uh, and understanding, and not at all like his exterior seems. And so a grid is a, a resolve with a real higher purpose. And uh, his purpose is always to support the family. I am so grateful for this stability, and I hope I don't cry here, this wonderful man that I married. He was really the, the anchor. His father had said to Steve years ago when he was 18, you can quit, but you can't come home. Well, after an amazing journey, Steve Young has made it back home. I love home. When I was a kid, I didn't like going away from home. I wasn't very good at it. But sometimes you gotta go further away, you know, to get back. It's fun to watch them try to teach them how to work and do hard things. And, uh, you know, the same things I try to teach those boys. So they learn the hard way and they're making it tough on their sons and their daughters. I think it's to give the same thing to my kids. It's really trying to figure them out and give them that same resolve, that same sense of uh, spiritual awareness to seek for more and do more and be more. If they can continue that uh, tradition, uh, it would be great.